Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Gold and silver, and the only price that matters. Let's explore! We see a lot of different prices out there for gold and silver at any given day. Most of them revolve around what's known as the spot price. But the spot price, though, is divided into two different categories. You have the bid price and the ask price, which are prices that are um, essentially utilized for trading, mostly on the COMEX, LBMA, and the like. But Nonetheless, you do see different numbers out there for bid and ask price, depending on where you look. You know, dealers have their own feeds and, and, and reporting spot price. And then you have other agencies, COMEX and, and the like, that report it in a different way. And so what is the actual spot price? No one really knows. There's not a real definitive answer to that question. Because so many different people report different numbers out there. However, it is important. And all the prices that you see for gold and silver are important for sure. But when you have futures prices too, and they start to diverge from the spot price, whatever that may be in a particular time, because uh, depending on how it's reported, you know, certain places report in real time and other places report only in a you know in integrals and there may be a delay in reporting that price but obviously when you make a purchase the spot price is the number that is utilized from which to calculate premiums and that is another example that we're seeing diverge from the spot price and even futures price but these numbers that are reported and are utilized from which purchases are made uh, do certainly have a level of importance to them because they gauge the premiums that we are going to pay for these precious metals. But nonetheless, there are times when in a normal situation where we can find deals that are either at spot or in some rare cases even under spot. And of course, that is the measure uh, that we do utilize to make our purchases of gold and silver. But Really, the prices that matter, and there are two prices that matter here when we take into this into account, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. What you see before you here are representations of gold and silver in bar form. And I chose this visual for a reason, because when you buy precious metals, um, you, you are basing that price off of the metal content contained therein. And these are recognizable names, brand names, even sovereign mints that produce these particular bars. You know, it can be a private institution or a government-backed uh, agency that produces these metals. But they're not monetized. It is the, the content of the metal itself which is important here in this particular video because sometimes when you uh, utilize coins, they, they carry a, an extra premium tied to them. And uh, we want to talk about just the metals themselves. So in other words, if you're going to buy a generic or a, uh, or a privately minted piece, you know, you want to be able to have the confidence that you can be able to uh, get your money back out of that based off of the metal itself. Branding is important uh, to a degree. You want recognizability, um, whether it be from a sovereign mint or a refinery or a name or what have you that's recognizable from when you do want to sell for sure. But the metal itself really sells itself whether you are buying and selling. And it can be tested in, in a way. So these are representations in bar form that uh, help just to bring home the point of what prices really do matter uh, when it comes to the metals themselves, notwithstanding the recognizability and the liquidity that is given to a name or uh, a, a coined denominated uh, uh, bullion out there that's recognizable. So the prices that matter the most, 
or that matter at all in terms of us as buyers and sellers are the price that we buy these metals for and the prices that we sell these metals for. Those are the two prices that matter. Let me, explore, let me expand upon that. Whenever we buy a, an ounce of gold, these two particular pieces here, the Perth Mint one ounce gold bar and the Royal Canadian Mint one ounce gold bar were purchased at completely different prices. That's right. They were purchased at, at times uh, where, uh, you know, it, uh, it brought about a, uh, a purchase agreement with the dealer. In this particular case, for the Perth Mint bar, I paid close to $1,600 for this bar. And that is a price that was really tough to, to make, uh, but it was a time when I cashed out my IRA, and I thought for sure that we were going to be heading back up and much higher to that. And so with this particular bar, I purchased it at a pretty high price, which included the premium above spot price for this particular piece here. This particular gold bar I bought for uh, around 1200 and some odd dollars, a lot less than this, buy, than this particular piece. Let's say a $350 difference uh, because I don't remember the exact prices, but those are the prices that matter when I bought those particular pieces. And people do uh, have spreadsheets of their purchase prices so that they can dollar cost average. In this particular case, there is a $300 to $350 price differential between these two bars here. And so that price does matter. Um, and uh, so that is one way to look at it. Now, these two particular bars here, uh, I purchased this bar, I believe, when the prices were up fairly high. Let's say... Uh, $30 an ounce uh, as an example. It may have been a little bit less than that, but I think probably when I bought that, it was probably close to $30 an ounce, even though it's showing a five ounce bar here just for the case of simplification. Uh, to, being, uh, to simplify matters, this particular, let's say this is a one ounce bar for $30, and this bar here I bought a long time ago when silver was around six, seven dollars an ounce. Uh, so you can see there's a big, very wide difference between the prices for uh, gold and silver in this particular case and how um, the, the purchase price that matters when you make a buy. Now, if I was to sell all of these pieces right now, um, uh, that would be the price that matters when I go to sell them. Price discovery when I go to sell these. I'd probably get near the same amount for these two uh, bars. Um, and even though the purchase price was a lot different, and the same here, price per ounce. And let's say if I was to sell these things here, and uh, somebody would uh, give me twenty dollars an ounce, or let's say eighteen or seventeen dollars an ounce, well, I'd be uh, losing out big time in this bar, and picking up the loss big time in that bar. But nonetheless, it is that price discovery. Uh, whenever you go to sell, the other prices are important. There's no question about it. But when, when it comes down uh, to um, your personal situation, the only prices that matter are the prices that you pay at the, time, at the point of sale and the prices that you uh, obtain when you go to sell these pieces. And in many cases, in a normal situation, for some silver, generic, or even some name brands, particular pieces, they're going to give you under spot, an appreciable amount under spot. Sometimes that happens for gold as well, especially in these certain scenarios. And sometimes they, they base it off of bid price as opposed to ask price, and that is that percentage different that you're paying. So you're, you will, or being paid, you will be paid at a percentage under spot price bid or under spot price ask, which would be spot price bid. Um, but that is really what it's all about. It's about the price that you pay and it's about the price that you sell. That's very important to think about it because we do get wrapped up and you will even see many different representations of videos on this channel when we talk about spot price. But really, as long as you hold the pieces, they will not lose or gain any value in your collection until you actually do sell. And that is the underlying message here. Because of those two bookends, the price of what you buy, the price that you sell, 
what's what happens in between. And what happens in between is the holding of these precious metals. And that's what it's about. I want to encourage you that no matter what anybody says about silver or no matter what anybody says about gold, you hold it, you own it, and you own up to it because it's only then that you have the fortitude to be able to have that confidence that these metals will do what they're supposed to do, and that is to preserve your wealth in the long run. And there may be times where you may want to sell and take a profit. There may be times where you need to sell and take a loss. Be prepared for both of those situations. But that's really the bottom line here, is that the prices that matter are the prices that you buy the metals and the prices that you sell. So I would encourage you in between that particular time is to not sell your precious metals unless you have to or unless you see an opportunity to make money on them in those rare, case, in those rare cases. But make no mistake that these metals are not here to make you money. These metals are here to preserve your wealth. So keep that in mind. And I hope you found this video encouraging and helpful. would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.